eliminated remote. Why? The elimination this episode really hurt. While I do not feel too strongly about Naily, Remote was my favorite character. Compared to so many characters in the cast, she had no reason to go. I mean, Ice Cube has been useless since Teapot has begun, and I love Rocky, but he's just a guy who throws up. As far as the other members of Death Pact again, I think Fanny undoubtedly deserved to be eliminated. He just has the same gimmick of hating everything, and compared to Remote is nothing. I also personally do not love Marker, but I far more understand not wanting him to be eliminated. Regardless, this was a sad elimination, and I am just hoping Death Pact again is not up for elimination for another handful of episodes. The actual episode begins with a pretty funny Yellowface commercial. I always like when Jack and Jellify go back to what they used to do and just make something dumb and stupid like this. Afterwards, it is revealed that Two has upgraded the planes which considering how bland so many object shows look is very much appreciated. Though after the elimination, in a wacky chain of events, his prized $10,000 plates have been washed away into the bottom of the Goiki Canal. From here, each team is tasked with getting a plate to be safe from elimination. And man is this challenge better than the last one. The last challenge definitely had diversity, but each team needing to find a way to explore the deep depths of the canal is infinitely more interesting than just sitting around with a plant. So just like last time, let's look over each team and what they did. For this episode, the S played a relatively minimal role, but compared to their literal one scene last time, it was much appreciated. After failing to dig into the canal several times, they opted to dissolve Ice Cube over and over until the canal's surface freezes, and they can wait for a team to basically bring a plate to them. I enjoyed them in this episode pretty well. The way Winner was hopeful when digging the entire team to their death was really funny, and they had a solid enough strategy that it makes sense for them to win. And oh my god, Ice Cube actually talked this time. Thank god! People have been complaining about Ice Cube just reusing voice lines since episode 1 of Teapot, so it is very relieving to see her actually talk in full sentences again. Also, sorry for misgendering her last video. For my crimes, I will be going to hell for one million years! The strongest team on Earth got to do a good amount this episode, and while kind of illogical, it was pretty funny. They steal Golf Ball's fish robot and use it to try and reach the plates. This ultimately fails, but the main conflict is Robot Flower and TV, who they accidentally kidnapped, deciding that mechanical minds have to stick together. So they murder everyone. To me, this was pretty contrived, like Eggy specifically referring to the fish as just a robot for no actual reason, and Robot Flower being against them tricking a giant fish who kills people. Aside from this small writing flaw, the team was fun to watch. Stuff like Grassy talking to the fish, and the mere act of stealing the fish robot from Golf Ball. It makes the teams actually seem like people as their rivalries continue. Ultimately, they lost, but contributed a lot to the episode. Remote! With that out of my system, I think Death Pact Again was at their, almost, most enjoyable so far in Teapot. Their plan to get the plates was to simply hold their breath underwater. To remedy not being able to talk, they learned how to talk through dance, and this one gimmick makes all their scenes hilarious. Every time Fan danced by just shaking his leg a little, and Tree's long monologue, it was all very enjoyable, and Black Hole's and Lightning's interactions were just as fun. While I am very sad Remote is gone, I'm happy to see the rest of the team go on to win a challenge competently. Black Hole being logical and deadpan as usual was funny, and their reaction to all the bodies in the canal from FreeSmart, not the YouTuber, was pretty funny as well. After getting their fish robot submarine stolen, Are You OK opts to use the airtight bubbles that the strongest team on Earth was originally going to use. While Eraser chased after Teardrop and actually got some of the plates, Golf Ball, Tennis Ball, and Pen spent a bunch of the time bouncing back and forth while yelling at each other. This is pretty funny, obviously, and leaves the rest of the team to have their own fun. Puffball and Fry specifically get to do a lot in this episode, tricking Winner and the rest of the S to die several times by trying to dig to the canal, and more prominently getting into a fight with Just Not to try and stop them from getting any plates. This was a very action-packed part of the episode, and while Eraser ended up getting his plate stolen, we need to talk about Just Not. After Pillow causes the challenge to actually happen, the team decides to mimic the plates falling from up in the sky. 
So since Pillow has already violated the laws of every government, she opts to violate the laws of gravity. The team basically continually catches themselves on debris that they are putting below and in front of themselves as they ascend upwards. While not very entertaining, aside from the premise, as mentioned, Fries and Puffball come to add some conflict. While Pillow sometimes is just a simple gimmick character, her having no moral compass allowed lots of shenanigans in this episode. She uses Bomby to try and attack the duo, throws every teammate she's got to clear obstacles in their path. While simple and somewhat repetitive, it was very entertaining. All of this actually works out as she jumps in and gets a plate in a matter of seconds. The rest of her team seemingly dead. The teammates were very weird this episode, but also entertaining, as well as getting me good thumbnail material. Coiny decides to order tools to help them get the plates, while the rest of the team wants to order useless stuff, he wants the world's most powerful magnet. Though when ordering, sends it to Yellowface's factory by accident. With this, the team needs to travel to the factory and get the magnet. A little contrived, since he could have just ordered a new one potentially, but I don't mind it since it was fun to see them not do something water related. A few funny jokes here and there as they make it to the factory and get the magnet as they come back right at the end, using the magnet to speed home and steal the final plate, staying safe. It was pretty good. Teardrop actually did something this episode. Since Teardrop is water, she just merges with the canal and goes down to the plates. Not a lot to talk about outside of that, but her prominence in this episode was good, and as usual, she works as a competent contestant and gets safety pretty easily. Also, I misgendered her in the last video. I'm pretty sure my Twitter will be going away. And you know what? I don't care that this is the second joke I made about misgendering somebody in my previous videos. It was funny. Overall, this episode of Teapot was a very good one, and I have little complaints about it. It was funny, charming, well animated with lots of cool shots and locations. It might be the best episode out yet, and with only one month between episodes now, I can't wait to see more. Also, I can't wait to see my subscriber count increase. Yeah, thank you Teapot. I'm scared for another member of the strongest team on Earth being eliminated, and I personally voted for Belle to be safe. Well, that was me, Golden Archetype, and stay gold everyone, stay gold. Mm -hmm.